today is the introduction to the clean cabinet challenge. I'm super stoked about this because I thought it would be really, really interesting to see what would become of this in my own process and to see how it would be for you guys as well. So how this goes is, I know I mentioned to you early on this year about what I'm doing and as far as just kind of like transitioning into a more cleaner, greener lifestyle. And I stopped, thought that the best way to start is what I put on my body, right? Because as I mentioned in my previous video, which I'll link below, what we put on our body can be absorbed or penetrated into the skin. So what better way than to start with the things that we put more often on our skin? So this is gonna be the Clean Cabinet Challenge Body Edition. I'm thinking I'm gonna do one for makeup and hair as well. So if you'd like to see what I found in my cabinets and the ingredients in there, stay tuned. So the Clean Cabinet Challenge is inspired by my desire to want to transition into a greener, cleaner lifestyle. And as I'm doing my research and informing myself, the information I'm coming across is rather shocking to say the least. A survey was done that showed that on average, women put on their bodies daily over 500 chemicals. And to you, you're probably like, Neh. really? But if you think about it, think about what we put on our hair, what we put on our face, and what we put on our bodies. Calculate all that and the multiple ingredients in those products that, by the way, you probably don't even look at, and I can see how that number can be possible. Not to mention your nail polish and everything else in between, let's just put it that way. So my thought is, why don't we actually find out what is in the products that we use daily? So I wanted to start with the Clean Cabinet Challenge, the body edition. And I personally want to be the first subject of this. And I went into my bathroom and I pulled a few products that I use rather often, if not daily and I wanted to see what is in there. So how I went about finding out about the ingredients in the products is I first used this app called Think Dirty, which is a really awesome app. You can scan the product or punch it in if you don't have the product available for you and it will tell you a score between one and 10 about how um, toxic it, it is for you. So like they'll have like a one to three and it'll be like green and then it'll be like four to six six or seven and it'll be like like a yellow and then red will be like eight to ten and I thought it was really awesome because not only that if you click on each ingredient it will tell you what is it for what studies were it done to see how toxic it is and basically what it's just a lot of information on it all right I, I don't remember all of it <laughs> but I also use the EWG's Skin Deep website to find out further information about it. And then I did extra because I am that way and I went on to medical journals to find out more information about the studies that were done on these toxic chemicals. So yeah, I'm not saying you have to be extra like that, but for me, I just needed to do my research a little bit further. And, but for the Clean Cabinet Challenge, I will be using the Think Dirty app. So like I said, you can scan the product and then find out about it. Because it's a newer app, I feel like its database is not that large, but you can add it to, take a picture and add it there. So let's get into the products I found in my cabinet. All right, so what do we do every day? Shower or take a bath? So that's where I am going to start <laughs> and then we'll go forward from there. So what I was using last, look, look at my little sample size, uh, was Olay's Fresh Outlast. Now, I know that it wasn't this bottle. This is my travel size, but the bigger bottle is gone. So, yes, this is the Olay Outlast. I don't even know what you guys can see, but the Olay Outlast cooling white strawberry and mint one. And the Think Dirty app gave it a seven, which is not so good, seen as that equates to carcinogens and allergies or immune tox uh, toxicity. Eesh. All right, so what I found in there was that it had fragrance that was causing this number, was two ingredients in particular, which was fragrance, and if you remember the video that I did before, links down below, it was talking about how fragrance, you never really know what's in there because according to the law, they don't have to disclose what they put in under fragrance. 
So that's a little scary and a little bit of a loophole into the system to go ahead and put whatever they want. The other thing that they, they have in this one is sodium lauryl uh, sulfate. And you guys, that was like my, like, uh, no, I don't mess with it. And not so much because it's necessarily toxic, but more so it's just harmful to the skin and super stripping to it. So my body wash that is claiming to be so hydrating and nourishing for me is actually stripping its natural lipids and oils in my body, causing it to be further drying. And the thing about it is, to be honest with you, it's not just Olay. A good portion of body soaps on the market have sodium lauryl sulfate and fragrance in it. So do your diligence, turn that bottle over, and I bet any money, one of the first ingredients is gonna be sodium lauryl sulfate, and one of the last ones, if not pretty much in the middle, and God forbid the top, will be fragrance. So take a look yourself. Also guys, what I'm gonna do and I didn't even mention is I will be doing the clean swap, which is basically what, now that I found that this isn't working for me or I don't wanna use this anymore, what am I using now as an alternative? And I will show you that later in my next video. So what happens after we take a shower? We want to lock in the moisture with our lotion. So for me, one of the lotions that I was using was Bath and Body Works Stress Relief. Which one's this one? The Eucalyptus Tea. And I used to love this one. It smelled so good. So good. Super toxic. Not happy about that. This one got a level eight, guys. That's in the red zone. You don't want to be in the red zone. And why? Let's see. The I have down here, it has... I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I'll put it right down here. I don't know how to say that word. Sorry, guys. It has that one, which actually releases formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a carcinogen to your body and extremely toxic. It also found on my Think Dirty app that it had two parabens. We talked about that in the top five harmful um, ingredients in skincare. And parabens are an absolute no. And there's two different types that are in this product. All right, what else? Petroleum. So petroleum is rather debatable, but I put down at the bottom, you're gonna see in the description, some links to studies on petroleum. I personally will not use it, although you can find petroleum in a lot of lip care. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's, it's a mineral oil. It's a freaking oil that is used on fossil or fossil, it's fossil fuel on your face. And a lot of people think that petroleum or Vaseline or things like that is actually hydrating, but contrary to belief on that is the fact that petroleum is just a sealant. That's all it is. It's like a top layer and it gives you slip, but it's not necessarily hydrating or nourishing to the skin. It's actually rather toxic to the skin. Now, I know there's people who are gonna argue with me that you know refined petroleum isn't toxic, but the debate is out on that one. And how do you know which one is refined or not refined? And who's really the people managing this? Because according to the FDA, they are leaving it to companies to be responsible themselves. And if something happens to you, then the FDA will go and jump in and find out if the company who's manufacturing these products are doing it lawfully. So we get to be the guinea pigs, basically, before we find out if the ingredients they're putting in their products are actually harmful to us. Mm, how about a new one then? All right, you guys are gonna hate me for this one, but it has to be done. It has to. So we all need to wear deodorant. I mean, for reasons I don't need to explain. <laughs> and the one that I used for years was Secret. <sighs> yes, yes. Yeah, my girl, the only reason I actually have this is because my girlfriend still uses this. And I had a whole chat with her last night and she will no longer be using it. Right, babe? Right. So, this one was, you guys, this was a nasty one. It got a rating of a level seven, which I already told you about what a level seven is, but it was rather disturbing in my opinion because what was in here is talc, 
which if you know talc is now starting to surface with the Johnson & Johnson um, lawsuit, which they awarded $72 million to um, a woman who was linking the fact that talc was causing ovarian cancer. Talc is found in baby powder. Pretty much all kinds of powders have talc in them. Um, they're, they're now they're doing them talc free. Why? Because the studies are starting to come out on these ingredients that are not regulated. I don't care what they say, they're not regulated. Coming for the, for the company after the fact that they've already poisoned and people are dying from it is not regulation to me. That, that I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. So the other ingredient in here is fragrance. We all know how I feel about fragrance. I'm very torn. If they can say that they don't have phthalates in it, okay, maybe, or derived naturally, but this one doesn't disclose exactly where it's from. So it's a no to me. Petroleum, I just talked about petroleum. First of all, why do we need petroleum in our underarms anyhow? Can someone please explain this to me? I have no idea why we need that. The last one, a debatable one, aluminum which is in majority of the antiperspirants, and I don't care what brand it is, um, unless it's more of a natural brand, aluminum is in there. Why? Because it is what they use to block the sweat glands from producing or excreting sweat, which is a natural function of your body. I'm not saying you gotta stink. I'm just saying it is a natural process to your body. The thing about it is, I went on to, uh, I was checking out like research on antiperspirants because I thought aluminum, I was like for so long, I was like aluminum cannot be good for us. Blocking our sweat glands cannot be healthy, right? So uh, cancer.org, link down below, talks about the links between, um, I believe it's cancer.org. Oh, I know it's a link down there. Talks about the link between cancer and aluminum in our antiperspirants. Now they're saying that antiperspirants are safe as long as they're not prolonged use. You guys, these antiperspirants are claiming 24 hour protection, 48 hour protection, so I'm supposed to wear this pretty much all day long. Is that not prolonged use? Don't we take a shower, put on our antiperspirants, or at least I do. And then the only time you're not wearing antiperspirants is your inner shower probably, because right afterwards you're putting it on. Not only that, they found that it does promote estrogen in the body. So aluminum is put in our sweat glands, right? In our underarms, and right next to it is our breast tissue, which is promoting estrogen. And the increase in estrogen has been linked to ovarian cancer as well as breast cancer. So, as long as you're not using deodorant for prolongs, you're not at risk of having breast cancer. <laughs> they need to stop playing. They need to stop playing with our lives. I'm just saying. I'm very upset about that one, and I think that it's really important that this one in particular, with, when it comes to lotions and the things that we use every day, guys, every day, are putting ourselves at risk. And... Look, and now I'm getting all serious about it. I gotta go to the next one. It's just upsetting. Next one. Toothpaste. So I don't have my toothpaste with me because I don't use it anymore, that particular one, but I will show you a picture right here. <laughs> so I used, I used to use the Crest 3D White, whichever one that they had, Glamorous or whatever the case may be. And I did look it up with the Think Dirty app, even though I couldn't scan it. And what I found with it is that it is a level seven, and it has, oh Lord, rolling the number, rolling the name, either this way or this way. I cannot say that. Poly Ethan, Ethanol, Ethan, no, eh, eh, eh. roll. So, and it has sodium lauryl sulfate, and it also has sodium fluoride. I don't want to get into a debate with anyone about fluoride. All I'm going to say is this. I would highly, highly recommend that you go into the description box of mine and look into the many links that I added on fluoride. It, to me, is a very harmful, harmful chemical and the unfortunate part is that they put it in our water. This one is surrounded with controversy and for good reasons, but 
I'm gonna let you decide on how you feel about that and I'm not even gonna throw anything out there, but I highly suggest that you take a look into that. Sodium lauryl sulfite, you guys already know how I feel. Sodium lauryl sorry, sodium lauryl sulfite, either one. You guys know how I feel about that one. But this polyethanol whateverness, that's plastic. Why do I need plastic in my toothpaste? No, sir, not for me. And last, I just wanted to include um, what I had for shaving cream. Why? Because it's something that we do quite often and I wanted to include it. So this one is Gillette Satin Care and it was a level seven and it had plastic in it for some reason. Not only does it have plastic, it has the plastic that Teflon is made out of, which by the way, there are lawsuits going on for Teflon. Just saying. And then there's some other ingredients which you will find in the screen, over here, maybe over here, maybe running across. <laughs> um, and it was a level seven. So anyways guys, that is my <laughs> dirty cabinet basically, as you can see. I couldn't find any of them that was below a five. So that will tell you what I've been taking in personally myself. And the saddest part is that these are things that our children are taking on too. Because nine times out of 10, the body wash you're using, your kid's probably using, or the lotion, or, or something like that. And to me, that is so sad because their little bodies are developing and we're putting on products that are hindering that progress for them to be happy, healthy individuals, adults and grownups. So yeah, guys. This is what I found for my dirty cabinet, <laughs> clean cabinet challenge. And so what I wanna do now is basically invite you guys to do the same thing. Take four, take five, and you know, download the app, don't download the app, but read the ingredients list and find out for yourself. Comment below on the products that you found that, and their scoring and what was in them and let's just share, share this information. Let's all become more aware because in my next video, I'm gonna do the clean swap. <laughs> and it's products that I found that I am swapping these out for that are healthier alternatives. So yes, guys, hashtag, okay, yes. So I thought it would be really, really cool if we can create a hashtag for the clean cabinet challenge so that we can upload pictures or add them into your comments and I am going to be so looking to see who is doing the clean cabinet challenge. I know I'm gonna post up a picture myself to show you guys what I found. Please, I cannot wait to see what you guys put up on there. I am going to be looking and let's create a community of awareness. So yes, guys, until the next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. You guys, if you guys are interested, you're gonna do it. If you're not, that's cool too. Either way, I'm not gonna take it personal. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and informing myself, informing you guys, and sharing all this love. So until next time, I will see you later, guys. Ciao.